what, what we did was really just we evaluated that and found that you know there's actually a lot of structures around that are going to influence how this building will relate to the site. So once you consider that, um, it, it actually makes makes the the building have a unique. I think the high rises that are located around it are not going anywhere. They're not going to be torn down in the next 50 years. So you really do have a context to respond to. And what we found out was that with doing certain small uh, adjustments to this rectangular form, we suddenly were able to capture views, particular views of landmarks around the city of Chicago. And for example, you might see around a corner, uh, you might be located on the east side of the building and be able to see around a corner and cap capture a view of the Bean uh, Cloudgate sculpt sculpture downtown. And so what this did was it set up a building that was more like a vertical landscape. So we, we, can, it, we were thinking about it in terms of contours, contours of the facade. This is a sketch that shows some of the landmarks we were trying to relate to. So what typically you would think of a building all by itself in the landscape, but in our case, uh, the Aeon Tower is right there. So the basic concept of this building is, you know, it's a kind of pregnancy that allows this uh, extraordinary views you wouldn't normally already have, especially for the lower levels in the building. The upper levels will, you know, of course, have un unobstructed views, but we like this idea of the particular response. The other thing that, you know, in getting down to the nitty gritty of materials, you always are dealing with the ground. And it's very interesting how in nature there are so many strata, especially in this part of the country, so many strata in the ground um, and, the, and how the foundations are going to have to um, work with that strata. And you have these strata in the man made landscape, which is, you know, constructed layers of groundscape. So in trying to uh, decide how we would transform these contours or bumps on the building, um, we decided to define them with the uh, slab edges, the slabs changing uh, to respond to those um, view corridors. And the amazing thing about that too, and I think it was mentioned also by Matt, is that you get these very different views of the building, when you are thinking about the building in the oblique, it becomes very three-dimensional. And in our case, we have a very perfect and very um, slender, rectangular view that you will see from farther away. So I think that those multiple views are very important when you're considering the high rise. This also reminded us of the region, which is around the Great Lakes, and we have a lot of uh, limestone and outcroppings of limestone, especially around Superior, but that is, has a, a very beautiful, um, similar quality of strata. We use both computer drawings and hand drawings, and I mean, most of our drawings that I'm showing here, they're very scrappy and sketchy, and it, it's, it's a working process that I think is very important to developing um, an idea beyond just the initial um, like the one-liner idea of the concept. Um, once we had these contours defined, we then went through and had to modify them to respond to the criteria. And the criteria is always something that we feel can actually help you. In this case, the, the large events that were occurring on the facade were now uh, modified in scale so that they could become more accommodate uh, the unit sizes in, inside the floor plan, and then these um, more like developing ripples that would respond particularly to the floor. This is the more uh, finished contour map of the facade, so basically the, the darker areas are the furthest extended out in terms of the cantilevers. And this is one of the early uh, models in the office. 
that at about this time we decided we'd better get a laser cutter because it, every single floor is different and um, it's, it becomes, to, to study this inner, we really need to have a tool such as that. I think with technology, there's, there's different kinds of, of technology. You can either be talking about the design process or you can be talking about the, the actual building, the components of building, like the curtain wall, for example, or you could be talking about the construction process. And, and we consider those tools and materials and processes in all of three of those categories. Uh, so we had to develop a kind of a language to describe what each of those bumps were doing. You know, some, sometimes they were uh, rolling across the facade in plan, like here, or other times it's swelling. Other times they develop a cleft, or we call this a flare. And in all of those things, we kind of very carefully crafted uh, the shapes of the, of the candles. So this is another version of that model where these uh, taking into account these different activities occurring on the facade. So when we started this process, we were working with engineers and with uh, the structural engineers and the contractor, as well as our associate architect, <coughs> Bloomberg Associates. And we, um, they did, the structural engineers developed a set of rules for us in terms of where we could, uh, how far we could cantilever and what parts of the building. And the cantilevers are possible because of the, of the back span that you have. It's just reinforced concrete um, cantilevering out. When we, when we do get up to 12 foot cantilevers, we have a, a upstanding a beam element that helps stiffen that slab. And so this is, this is the, all of the plants overlaid each other. And you can see here the, uh, the core. And as, as these, uh, as you get lower in the building, you get a much uh, longer continuous wall. <laughs> the model's showing what we imagine the, the terraces to be like, because they're really not just balconies, they're more like a, a big terrace that people can inhabit. And for us, the really important thing was you know, being able to go outside and get outside of the unit. So you're, even on an 80-story tower, it would be great to be able to step outside, as opposed to taking an elevator that's going to take you at least five minutes just to get to the ground. Uh, we wanted people to be able to step outside and use that space. We also considered a windscreen element, which is probably not going to happen, but um, we wanted to be able to modify that, that climate that is on the outside of the building. And then what, what was really interesting about this process is the, the, um, the developer and associate architect never, they constantly need to change the mix of the types of units based on what the uh, market is responding to. So there, there was a lot of fluctuation going on with the unit types. And we, we had to, it turned out that this uh, large terraces and extensions on the building was a very accommodating system. Um, because in certain cases, we had to shift uh, the, where the location of the door was to be able to access um, these terraces. In other cases, um, we had to modify how the two, two adjacent units would be meeting each other. We had to adjust for the ADA accessibility um, and the, all of the access around the doors themselves. So there were a whole number of, of criteria that came into play because of the way that we were approaching this design. And so this shows some of those criteria the lighting, we, we had to make sure that we had some places where uh, the contours would line up in order to get the hoist and the crane in place. And so those were things that we considered early on. Um, we had the accessibility, the, the location of the upstands, and we had the, the basic uh, rules from the structural engineers, MKA, as to uh, where we could do our deepest camp levers. And then we had the issue of the privacy separation between the units. 
So the, the balconies turn in at different places and don't totally correspond with the edge of the slab. As well, we really wanted to make sure that the building was doing what we wanted it to uh, in terms of the exterior wall and sun shading. There are areas on the building where there, the balconies actually completely disappear in this shown as diagram red area. And we were nicknaming those the burn areas for a while. And, and what we wanted to do then is, is to, to change the glass type in this area to be um, either more highly reflective or higher tint. And so what, interestingly, you know, it developed this whole very weird pattern facade that it wasn't um, our, our forceful design idea. It was us bonding to the criteria of sun shading. And, and we accept this pattern which is really coming out of what the building needs. And so we also had to, um, I don't know if you can see it in this, this is better. You can see that the window types change as well. So we have hoppers, we have casements where there is a burn area uh, so that it won't be a low opening window. And we just let the building tell us what it wanted to have instead of forcing uh, an order onto it. Another uh, one of the sun studies, uh, shadow patterns that, that uh, helped us with the, the glass types. And this, this just shows two of the different glass types we were looking at next to each other. So finally, I think what's, what's organic about the building is really that um, it, its initial concept set into motion this series of decisions that we, we needed to make and we let this this order come out of the, the needs of the building as opposed to um, trying to make a formal order, imposing a formal order outside of itself onto the building. And I also wanted to just show a couple images. I, one of the things that is dangerous about the icon, the building is an icon, is that I think that the, the danger is that it's possible to just make a beautiful image and and to let it stop at that point, when there's a whole other uh, level of development a building can go through. And so I picked some images of our building that we didn't develop. So these are from other people. This happens to be the model that's at the sales center. And then I found this image on a blog of people talking about this building. And I was happy to see that I like these images, images that I didn't myself or produce. This is also at the sales center. This one we did produce, but we got the perspective wrong and it like turned out wide at the top. This is another model image. And this one was, I especially like this one because whoever took this picture uh, cut the top of the building off. And uh, I think that it's important to realize that buildings are not totally icons. They, they, they don't stand by themselves. So it's quite common to get a clipped image of a building if you're walking down the street. Uh, this one uh, was a, a picture of a model that, that a photographer took and then just put in some background sky. I really like that. So thank you and